Hey, it's Dougie Wood, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can enable SharePoint's version control settings so you can keep track of all of the changes which are made to your document and even restore them back from previous points. So the first thing that we'll need to do is make sure that we've got uh, version control enabled on the document library for all of these features to work properly. Now, it's quite simple to do. Just navigate to the document library that you are working on and then click on the cog across the top right-hand corner of the screen. Then you're going to select Library Settings, which is the third link from the top. Then you then need to click on More Library Settings, which is the link just above the Save button. This will take you to the settings for that document library. Then you're looking for uh, Version Settings, which is a second link from the top on the left-hand links under General Settings. Click on that, and what we're looking for is just to make sure that the versioning settings is enabled. Now, you might find this is already enabled, so you don't necessarily need to do this, but it's worth just double checking and also being aware of what other features are available inside of the version settings. So the first option we have is require content approval for submitted items. Now, this can be quite useful if you're making sure that when documents are going through individual versions, especially when they're getting published from going from, say, a minor version to a major version, you might want to have approval for that. So you can choose that uh, if you wanted to. The next is the document version history. So this is where it says create a version each time you edit a file in this document library. Now, you've got two options here. You can either go with creating major versions only, so that's one, two, three, four, five, or you can have major and minor. Now, it puts it into brackets to say that minor versions are known as drafts. And again, you can have 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4 .1 as drafts. And then as soon as you publish, it then goes from whatever the, the major number was, in this case, one, up until the next major version, which is two. So you could have within reason as many minor versions as you want. You could be on 1.50 if you wanted to. And then it's, it's only when you publish um, it then goes to the next major version. Um, then we've got version time limit. So this is what kind of version time limit do you want to set? So uh, no time limit, which means versions won't be deleted based on that age. Automatic, which is where versions are deleted over time based on activity and how long ago the file was created, or manual. Um, so if you select manual, you can then say versions are deleted when exceeding the following number of days. So you could say 365, uh, meaning after a year, um, it would drop off that, that particular version. But I'm going to say no time limit because nine times out of ten, um, when you're first getting started with this, it's best not to necessarily get rid of versions until you're comfortable with how versioning is properly working um, so that you can properly track it. Uh, version count limit, so keeping the following number of major versions. Now, <laughs> be careful with how many major versions you're storing. The reason being is because you could quite easily hit some thresholds, as in storage thresholds, if you're storing too many versions, because technically every version of the document that you keep is like duplicate of a document. So if a document is one megabyte and you're storing 500 versions, you've got 500 megabytes worth of documents, essentially. So when I've seen in the past before where customers have called me and said, my SharePoint site has uh, exceeded its storage, we look at it, and it might not necessarily be the amount of files or even the size of files which are in the, causing the problem. It could be the amount of versions. So actually cutting that down. So in that scenario where we've got a one megabyte document, if um, we've got 500 versions, I'd say it's 500 megabytes, whereas if we then suddenly drop that to 100, all of a sudden we've just saved ourselves 400 megabytes worth of space. I know it's not quite a real example of that, but it gives you some simple numbers to just to understand what, what I'm trying to say. Um, cool. Then um, you can also say keep the amount of drafts if you wanted to. And you've also got some draft item securities here. So basically, we can say who should see draft items in the document library? Any user who can read items, only users who can edit items, only users who can approve items. So this is really good for, say, for example, your, your document library is a policy document library, and you are planning on working on the policies um, every so often, probably annually, and you don't want your end users to be able to see 
the draft versions as in what you're working on. You only want them to see the major versions, which is the published versions of any changes. That's where you can specify essentially who should see those draft items. Um, and also you've got this check-in, check-out. Now, to be honest, um, I would leave this as no because this is almost like a bit of an outdated SharePoint feature. People who've used SharePoint for a very long time will remember the kind of all the pains which uh, used to come before co-authoring existed where you had to check out a document to be able to edit it and then you had to check it back in again before your colleague could then edit that document. The problem being with that is... Say, for example, Joe Bloggs checks out a document and then he goes on holiday and then I'm coming to check uh, come to check out the document or come and edit the document and I can see it's still checked out Joe Bloggs. The problem being then is I can't edit it unless he uh, has checked it back in or I override his checkout, uh, which just causes more problems. So we'll just go ahead and click on OK. And that's then enabled um, the settings, the version settings that we want for our document library. So I'm just going to go back to my document library now. And as I say, there's two ways that we could possibly look at version history. Um, one is, as I say, we click on the three dots next to a document, and we click on version history. And then if any changes have been made to those documents, we can see a full audit history here of exactly who's changed the document, uh, when they changed the document, and the size differences between the documents as well. So most likely you'll see uh, the size increasing as you're working on the document, adding new things to the, the document. But this is a fantastic place to look if something was to have been removed from the document that shouldn't have been removed from the document. You can go back into the version history and track it down because, say, for example, if all of a sudden the file size of this document dropped down. So let's just go and do that. Let's just go and remove a bunch of things from the document. We open up the document and we're going to be making a change so that we can track it inside the version history. Let's just literally now uh, select a bunch of the text and let's just get rid of it. A whole bunch of it. Now, if I uh, come out of the document, I'm just going to refresh the uh, page, and then I'm going to go back into the version history um, in here. You can now see um, that the change was made, but also um, the the size of the document has gone down. So the size has gone down. Now, I know that's not a great example because there wasn't much in the document in the first place. But if you imagine you had a document with 100 uh, pages in there and it had loads of images and stuff like that, and all of a sudden someone deleted uh, 10 pages with all the uh, images and stuff, and you're like, oh, no, where's that gone? You could go back and find exactly when it was that changed based on when that size is removed. You can also choose to go back. So say, for example, if I realize, oh, no, wait, um, I want the, the content where it was. I want... I, I'm, I deleted it by mistake. You could click on the drop down, click to either view it uh, or restore it. So you could actually restore it back to that point in time. Now, what that will do is it will create a new version. So now you can see we've got version four of the document. It's not got rid of that version of three. So if ever actually I, w I wanted to double back on myself and say, actually, no, wait, I do prefer the document with all that content deleted, you could always go back and I say restore it from a previous point in time. You're never going to get rid of those kind of versions. Those documents are going to stay there. It's basically to make sure that everything is tracked, so everything is completely version controlled, and um, you can always restore back to something else. I wanted to ask a quick favor. If you're enjoying this video, please do subscribe to my channel. It's a free way that you can say thank you, and I really appreciate it. If you need any professional help in setting up your SharePoint or version control, or if you're interested in purchasing a pre-built SharePoint document control system, then you can get in contact with me via a link in the description below and also a link on my YouTube channel profile page. The other key thing to um, mention when it comes to version control as well is we can also show the version numbers alongside the, uh, the what we call metadata, these columns inside of SharePoint. Now, you don't do this by adding a new column. The column actually already exists, so we just need to add it to our view. So if I wanted to add it to my All Documents view, I can just click on this drop-down, click on Edit Current View, and that's going to take me to a page which is going to allow me to configure the columns which are going to display inside of my default view. Then I'm going to scroll down, and I'm just going to find where it says Version, which is at the bottom, and I can choose where I want it to display. Now, I probably want it to sit next to the name of the actual file itself, uh, just to make it easier um, rather than having it sort of coming after the modified and modified by. 
So I'm going to change this to be third in the view. So be type name uh, followed by the version number. Then I just need to click on OK. And that's going to save it. And it's actually going to update it for everybody. So everyone's going to be able to see this as well. So now we can see here all of our uh, documents along with the version numbers as well um, that, that that document is currently on.